this week on Christian World News. Throughout history, Christians have been on the lookout for the Antichrist. Now, author and pastor Michael Yusuf makes a compelling case that he'll be a Muslim. Hmm. Plus, a revival that started more than 100 years ago is about to reignite. Here's the man who's calling America to be ready to catch the coming wave. And Medal of Honor winner, meet the Navy SEAL who saved an American missions worker from the Taliban. 여러분 안녕하십니까? 크리스천 월드 뉴스입니다. 지난 수세기 동안 우리 그리스도인들이 계속해서 해왔던 질문, 바로 적 그리스도에 대한 질문인데요. 종말의 시기에 나타나게 될적 그리스도의 존재, 이 국제선교사역단체 한 목회자가 자신의 신간을 통해 이적 그리스도의 존재에 대해 이야기하고 있는데요. 오늘의 첫 소식으로 함께 만나보시죠. Over the centuries, people have guessed wrong again and again that the Antichrist, that ultra-violent world dictator, was soon to appear. But Dr. Michael Youssef of the Global Outreach Ministry leading the way believes only now are conditions set for the coming of that evil one. What Dr. Youssef found and talks about in End Times and the Secret of the Mahdi is how what's going on in our world right now is leading straight towards those events prophesied in the book of Revelation. I came with the conclusion that we are coming into that period of time Uh, like we have never seen before in history. Hailing from Cairo himself, Youssef deeply loves the Islamic people, but believes Islam is hurtling us toward the dark days of the Antichrist, as the promo for his book shows. He will lull the world into believing in him, even worshiping him as their Messiah. But he will end up abusing humanity like they have never been tormented before. This biblical scholar has been researching Islam's beliefs in their end times Messiah, alongside the Bible's revelations about the Antichrist. His conclusion? Christians know him as the Antichrist. Sunni Muslims know him as the Muslim Christ. Shiite Muslims know him as the Mahdi. Youssef quotes Muslim scholars on what Islam preaches about their Messiah. Their Messiah comes. He's going to cover the whole world. He's going to rule the world. And he's going to declare himself to be a Muslim. and he's going to turn on the Christians and the Jews. And we know, of course, the Bible said the Antichrist is going to come and he's going to turn on the Christians and the Jews. Other parallels he sees between the Mahdi and the Antichrist? He will call himself the man of peace, that he's going to come at a time of chaos and confusion and people longing for somebody to guide them and lead them and, and bring them peace because they will be worn out. Both the Bible and Islam talk about his seven-year global reign from Jerusalem. and that this figure of peace will turn hyper-violent. He's going to begin to persecute people. He's going to demand them their worship. Same thing on the other side, that he is going to kill everybody who does not worship him. Youssef says some Shiites have actually been trying to bring about the prophesied time of the Mahdi to make it happen themselves. He will appear when the world is in chaos and he will bring peace. So Ahmadinejad, the former president of Iran, basically wanted to stir up trouble and get the nuclear weapons so they can attack Israel and create an atmosphere of chaos so that to force their Mahdi or the 12th Caliphate to show up. And some of the most violent Sunnis are also trying to set off the end times. Particularly those who, whom the Middle East people call Daesh or ISIS or IS. Um, they also have that, that concept that when chaos and bloodshed reign supreme, and that's why they're shedding so much blood, that their Messiah will come. So if Pastor Youssef's belief is correct that this Muslim Messiah will be the Antichrist, it's the first time in history believers of a major religion have been actively working to bring him into the world and welcome him. But Youssef insists, do not fear. The Lord said, when you see these signs, lift up your head, because you, the day of your redemption is drawing nigh. And so far from being afraid and worried and concerned, we should be rejoicing. Many believe the Bible warns that the world will be deceived by Antichrist's global false religion, at first tolerating and bringing all religions together. In his book, Youssef talks about the already popular Coexist bumper sticker, with the Islamic crescent forming its C, the Jewish Star of David for X, the witchcraft or pagan pentacle dotting the I, the Taoist yin and yang symbol for S, and the cross of Christ as the T. Already, there is something that is rampant among mainland denominations called uh, Chrislam, 
And uh, there are churches in Canada and the United States where they read from the Quran as well as the Bible. But he adds that there's a way to be immune from false religion. If a person is a genuine believer in Jesus Christ, he will not be deceived. That the Holy Spirit is going to give us discernment that we will be able to tell the difference. And though they may be cursed as intolerant, Youssef preaches it's time for Christians to insist Christ is the only way, not just one more option. We don't hate anyone. We love everyone. But there's only one name under heaven by which men and women can be saved. And his name is Jesus. What Dr. Youssef emphasizes when he broadcasts here from Leading the Way or anywhere he goes is that we Christians need not fear all those scary events in the book of Revelation, but we do have to go through that horrifying time of the Antichrist before we can get to the victorious return of our Christ. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Leading the Way, Atlanta, Georgia. Syria와 Iraq 소수 종교인들에 대한 공격을 집단 학살로 정의하고 이를 인류에 대한 범죄로 규정하는 결의안이 미 하원 의원에서 만장일치로 통과됐습니다. The measure says those who support mass murder and atrocities against religious minorities in the Middle East are guilty of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. The genocide measure extends even to groups beyond ISIS. The declaration is considered a victory for religious minorities in Iraq and Syria. 지난 2012년 기독교 신앙을 이유로 이란 감옥에 수감됐던 사이드 아브디니 목사가 감옥에서 풀려난 지한 달이 넘었습니다. 사이드 아브디니 목사를 만나 당시의 고통과 박해 이야기를 들어봤습니다. I knew they know I felt in my spirit that some threat is going to come in. That feeling came during Pastor Saeed Abedini's 10th arrest in Iran. I know that maybe they're going to kill us because I turned from Islam to Christianity. But Holy Spirit was with me and he encouraged me, prepared me for all this suffering I, I, I should go through. Saeed used this time reaching out and ministering to those around him. Tens of the prisoners were returned to Christ the first year. So the prison found it out, intelligent police found it out. They took me to another prison where the situation was worse. In every place that they changed my, you know, my prison, it was a good time to evangelize, to see a new people and evangelize to them, which made them so angry. But preaching God's word came with consequences. Every people who became Christian with me, they start torturing them separate me uh, from them and the last two years they made uh, me completely isolated. Was there ever a time when you were over there where you didn't know if you would make it back to America? You know the first six months they always threatened me to death and they said for for sure you're gonna be executed for what you did. You made thousand Muslim Christian. But every time that I prayed you know Holy Spirit put in my heart no, still I have some work to do for you. After three and a half years, Pastor Saeed Abedini has finally returned home to what he says is a very different America than the one he left. It seems that they found out that something should be changed. There is something wrong. I believe that uh, God wants to bring revival back to America. Thankful to be home, Saeed still faces challenges adjusting to life back in Idaho with his wife and children. My marriage actually it's not in a good position right now and I need people who prayed for me to continue. But Saeed remains hopeful. I knew that uh, I'm gonna go to this suffering because of my faith and I knew that uh, God is using this opportunity to that the gospel be preached. So I always un encourage myself that the things I'm going into it's not uh, um, actually useless, it's not for nothing, and good thing is coming out from it. Reporting from Washington, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. 한편 지난 2011년 이란에 수감된 벤함 이라니 목사의 복역 기간은 올해 말까지인데요. 하지만 그가 당하고 있는 고난과 박해는 여전해 우려를 낳고 있습니다. Reports the pastor has recently suffered more beatings by Iranian secret police. Iranian Christians say this is not unusual. Prison officials think if they do this, they will be able to break Christian inmates and force them to convert to Islam. Still ahead, it's the event that started a movement with half a billion followers. And you can be on hand as it begins its next phase. Lou Ingle takes us inside the Azusa Street Revival. 
경기장에 10만 명의 신자들이 빼곡하게 들어찼다면 이 얼마나 은혜가 되는 광경일까요? 아주사거리 부흥 110주년을 기념하기 위해 모인 사람들이라고 하는데요. 1999년부터 로잉그레 지휘 아래 기획되어 온 대규모 기도 집회라고 합니다. He's the co-founder of The Call, a prayer movement where hundreds of thousands of people gather for prayer, fasting and worship. And on April 9th, 2016, in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, The Call will hold a prayer rally called Azusa Street Now, or Azusa Now. The event will be held on the 110th anniversary of the Azusa Street outpouring, and that was the beginning of the Pentecostal charismatic movement in the United States. Well, Lou, I know, he is praying that this event will help to start a great awakening in America that will turn people back to God and 그렇다면 이번 집회는 어떤 의미가 있을까요? 더콜의 공동 창립자인 루 잉글과의 조금 더 자세한 인터뷰를 통해 알아보겠습니다. A lot of folks might not have heard about Azusa Street. What happened there? Well, what happened was an African American man named William Seymour came from Houston. He was seeking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God fell in 1906 in a small group of believers. That tongue of fire erupted on the place called Azusa Street, and it spread all over the world. It was the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it was the, they said the color line was washed away in the blood. It united the body of Christ and all those races. Could God do such a thing again? How long did it last, and why did it end? Well, it, it, it actually went to about 2000, uh, I mean, 1916. Okay. And it really, it was partly racial division in the body of Christ that actually ended it. And so, but we believe that God's bringing these things back again because he wants to make us one. So before it ended, though, William Seymour and someone else had a prophecy uh, that's pertinent to today. Tell us about that. It was somewhere between uh, 1909 and 1913. He prophesied that in a hundred years, a revival far eclipsing Azusa Street would take place. Maria Woodworth Eder, the healing revivalist, prophesied the same thing. I've just run into a man in Africa that has 10 million people have been praying that prophecy for three years. And God, it's time. We believe we're in a season of a great outpouring of the Spirit. Because if I do my math correct, it's a hundred years later. Yeah, we're like, in that moment like right exactly. now. Like Daniel, when he yeah. knew it was time, he set his face to fast and pray to see that prophecy fulfilled. And, okay, this is happening after April 9th. You said you've got about a thousand people a day signing up to come yeah, to California. It's, it's been extraordinary. They, uh, something's happening. I think there's a sense in the spirit all over the globe, but in America, in the church, there's this expectancy that God is getting ready to move again. And we're excited that this could be a flashpoint. I don't think it's the beginning. I think it's just a flashpoint yeah. of encouraging and releasing power and signs and wonders. Well, you're most known for the call prayer movement. And as you mentioned, I was with you back when it started back in D.C. It was an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Then you moved. Then we had 9-11. You moved up to, to Boston, New York. Uh, there's so many of Nashville, them. Nashville, 777. Nashville. You even had one in Jerusalem in uh, 2008. I yeah. went to that one. It was incredible. Um, and you've called this a John the Baptist type of movement. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, before it started, I had a dream in which I was overwhelmed with the impossibility of seeing America turn back to God. But in the dream, a scroll rolled down before me, and it said, and he will go on before the Lord and the Spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers, fathers to the children and the rebellious to the wisdom of the righteous. And in the dream, I just knew the Lord was saying that this was a, it's not, it, I'm, it's not a John the Baptist, but it, it had that yeah. fasting, praying, Nazarite kind of deal. Well, Lou, how can people get involved in this? Go fest? to the call. I mean, go to <laughs> AzusaNow2016.com. Get all the information. Begin to fast and pray right now. Let's not go for an, an, an event. Let's go for a massive breakthrough across the nation. That would be incredible. Well, up next, he won the Medal of Honor for helping rescue a missionary doctor. Hear this Navy SEAL story and the faith that strengthens him. 아프가니스탄에서 기독교인 의사를 구출한 공로로 미 해군 특수부대 요원이 백악관에서 미국 최고의 명예 훈장을 받았다고 합니다. 에드워드 바이어스라는 이름의 요원인데요. 그의 이야기를 만나러 함께 가보시죠. On a cold December night three years ago, Edward Byers and a team of Navy SEALs were on a covert mission in the mountains of Afghanistan. 
Three days earlier, American doctor Dilip Joseph had been captured by the Taliban while carrying out a Christian medical mission. There was reason to believe that the Taliban commander was on his way to take custody of the American hostage and move him into Pakistan. So time was of the essence. Byers and his Navy SEAL teammates were there to take Joseph home. A hostage rescue is something Byers calls a no-fail mission. After a difficult four-hour hike through the mountains, Byers and his team finally reached Dr. Joseph and took on the enemy. Byers' teammate, Navy SEAL Nick Check, was first to fire on a guard outside and was hit. And I made my way in right behind him, and I went down my wall, and I en engaged uh, one of the enemy that was on the back side of the wall. And then I saw another person moving across the floor. Perhaps the hostage, perhaps another guard lunging for a weapon. The struggle was hand to hand. They had straddled him, pinning him down. They had adjusted his night vision goggles. Things came into focus and he was on top of a guard. At the same time this is happening, we're calling out, trying to find the location of the American hostage. And finally uh, he spoke up. And it was at that time that I engaged the person I was on top of and jumped off the guy I was on and onto the doctor who was about three or four, maybe five feet away from me to my right. While shielding Dr. Joseph with his body, Byers detected another threat. There was a guy who was right behind him with about within arm's reach. He was armed and I was able to uh, pin that guy to the wall by his throat. It was chaotic, but within minutes, Byers had saved the life of Dr. Joseph and his teammates. For his valor, President Obama awarded him with the highest honor of the military. But success came with a price. The first SEAL to rush in during the rescue, Nick Check, didn't survive. The award is truly his. He was an American hero, and he was a hero of that operation. Although Byers and his fellow SEALs are among the most elite fighters in the world, Byers says he relies on his faith in battle. I wore the St. Michael the Archangel patch on my back for every deployment, every mission I've ever been on. And I've always said a prayer to protect us and look over us. And that's gave me a lot of uh, resiliency and, and to be able to carry on. He joins a prestigious list of military men who've worn or wear the Medal of Honor. I in particular want to acknowledge my beautiful wife, my incredible daughter, whose support has been unwavering. Soon, he'll go back to the job he loves. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, the White House. 지카 바이러스의 공포가 확산되면서 라틴 아메리카의 정부들은 국제보건 비상사태를 선언했습니다. 신생아의 뇌를 손상시키는 것으로 알려진 지카 바이러스는 계속해서 확산되며 우려를 낳고 있는데요. CBN 오퍼레이션 블레싱 팀이 독특한 접근 방식으로 이 지카 바이러스에 대응하고 있다고 합니다. Health workers in Lima, Peru, fumigate classrooms in hopes of preventing the spread of the deadly Zika virus. But insecticide spraying and mosquito nets, for the most part, have proven ineffective in stopping the mosquito called Aedes aegypti that spreads the Zika virus. Operation Blessing International President Bill Horan explains that it has to do when the mosquitoes are active. Mosquito bed nets are not as effective for these mosquitoes as they were for most because the Aedes aegypti sleeps at night. They don't bite very often at night. These mosquitoes are especially active right at dawn for about two hours and just before dark for about two hours. Based on Operation Blessing's experience in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, Horan came up with a unique solution. OB is distributing mosquito-eating fish, like the indigenous Sambo fish in El Salvador. We are using them, we're distributing them, and we're helping to support a woman who is raising them down there. But in Mexico now, we have the okay right from the cabinet level of the Mexican government to use gambusia that are found locally in Mexico to eat mosquito larvae. OB is working in the Acapulco area and soon in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula near Cancun. And on location in El Salvador, Operation Blessings Tony Sisi explains how the project works there. They're putting the fish into their sinks and into containers like this. Now this one's being used to store the Sambo fish, 
But in homes, they use it to store water. And one of the problems is that these are a breeding ground for the Aedes aegypti larvae, which become the mosquitoes that carry the viruses like chikungunya and dengue, and now Zika. The Zika virus has been linked to brain damage in babies and paralysis in others. OB workers are raising awareness. Well, you've always said, Bill, that educating the public is crucial. Uh, how are you doing that? What, what do they need to know that they don't know? At well, this Gary, we've learned in other outbreaks of ep epidemics uh, like cholera, like Ebola, that e awareness, making the public aware, especially the poor who don't have access maybe to television the way that we do or the Internet, we, we have our teams out making people aware of this Zika, what it is and how they can fight it themselves. And Operation Blessing's efforts aren't limited to El Salvador and Mexico. Horan met with Ana Hernandez, the first lady of Honduras, to get her blessing to start a mosquito-eating fish project in that Central American country. We're doing a great service. We're saving lives. We're eliminating suffering. And we're going after this disease at its source. But wherever the Zika goes, uh, Operation Blessing is going to go also. Gary Lane, CBN News. 마지막으로 캘리포니아에서 일어난 놀라운 일을 영상으로 보여드리겠습니다. This is what's being called a super bloom. It's happening in Death Valley, California. The area is one of the driest places on Earth. It typically only gets about two inches of rain each year. But this year, the area got more rain than usual, just enough to transform it into this. Look at that. Just another reminder of God's majesty. 오늘 준비한 소식은 여기까지입니다. 저는 다음 주에 다시 찾아오겠습니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다.